Well, welcome to the Get Organized Challenge, week number six of 12, so this is our halfway point. For those of you who are just jumping in for this week, each week sort of builds on things we've learned the previous week. So if you're jumping in for embossing folder organization, I'm gonna encourage you to do two things. Watch today's class, of course, but also, um, that would be three things, I guess. First thing is watch challenge number one where we kind of talk about the mental process for getting organized. And then last week we talked about stamp organization and we're gonna sort of replicate what we did with stamps for embossing folders. So it's gonna be important to, I don't know if it's, you'll find a lot more information that's applicable here to the foundation that we did last week in stamps. I'm gonna take you through the process and if you feel like you need more information, pop back and watch the stamp video and that'll give you a little bit more detail on that as well. Okay, what are we doing? We are going to get our embossing folders organized and how we're gonna do that, step one, which I say almost at the beginning of every challenge is gather all those embossing folders together. You need to know what you have and how many of them you've got so that you can make good decisions about choosing the right organization containers. Now, uh, on my website we have bunches of different organization containers. I'll include a link. You don't have to have anything special. You might already have containers that work well for you. You just need to organize within those. You're going to be able to take all the information from this class and apply it to those containers as well. If you need things, there's a link and you can check out the website. Okay, so gather everything together. Step one. Step two, sort your um, embossing folders by size. Really important because you want to fill that space in your craft room left to right, back to front, top to bottom, and really be efficient. Be able to access your supplies, uh, but also not be wasting a ton of space, right? So that's the reason we sort things by size so that we can use our containers most efficiently. Now, if you're an embossing folder junkie, you're gonna have more containers than somebody who just has a few, and you're gonna be able to choose different things uh, that way. So I'm kind of a moderate um, on the embossing folders. I, I actually know that somewhere floating around my studio here is one more container of embossing folders and I'm gonna incorporate them into my die stamp and supply organizer as soon as I locate them, but I know they're here somewhere. Okay, first step, sort by size. Well, it's actually gather, sort by size. Once you've got your embossing folders sorted by size, you're gonna kind of know how many you have and how much storage you need. So if you've got your embossing folders sorted into stacks by size, right? You can see the different sizes that you have and then you can decide, okay, I need one small container. Maybe this is gonna be something like a, um, like a Katja buddy bag if you have this size. And then uh, maybe one small container of four by six. These are gonna go in something like a fab file or if you're like me, you're gonna put all of your different sizes together in something like a die stamp and supply organizer. So this kind of terraces up all the different sizes um, so they're, they're all in one place for me. Now, again, one of the things about doing the first challenge is you kind of go through that. What type of crafter are you? Do you travel with your craft supplies? And that's gonna help you determine what type of containers you wanna use as well. Once you have your um, embossing folders sorted by size, the next thing to do is load them in the containers. Now this seems counterintuitive because most people want to label them, catalog them, do all those steps before they load the containers. But it's more important, load the containers first, number your embossing folders first, and then create your catalog. So you'll know when you create the catalog, where in the catalog those items are gonna go and what the number's gonna be so you can do the entire process that way. So it seems almost a little backwards, but once you start doing it, you'll totally understand why you need to load your containers first, um, then number, then catalog. So containers are loaded. I have two different types of container here. This is a fab file, and this is my die stamp and supply organizer. Now, much like stamps, I went through and calculated how many embossing folders will fit in each section. So with this particular tool, I can get 15 embossing folders in each of the sections. So I created numbers or left numbers where I didn't have any embossing folders that will max out this space based on the smallest size of embossing folder that fits in the front, in the middle, and in the back. Now, I may have extra numbers, right? I may, so these are calculated out for tiny embossing folder size like this. I may end up removing this section and then I will 
lose 15 of the spaces. It doesn't matter if numbers are missing, like you don't have a die uh, embossing folder with those numbers because the rest of the numbers are still going to be in order. But it does matter that you don't leave enough numbers and then you're having to do things like uh, die, uh, embossing folder number 100A, 100B, 100C in order to get those things into your container. So how much will your container hold? First question. And then that's how many numbers you need to leave or assign for that section. This is the same thing we did with stamps, by the way. So I labeled mine, I filled each section, and then I went through and numbered all of them. Now, as you might remember, so my numbers start here at 205, I believe. 204. So um, my last container ended at 203. That was my stamp container. It doesn't matter that stamps and dies that the numbers are consistent because I know because that everything in here is two hundred starts at 203 or 204 sorry and goes forward and I know that ended at 203 so it doesn't matter right okay again stamp the stamp class last week will kind of give you a bigger insight into how that madness works in my OCD brain Okay, so now that I've got them numbered, now I'm gonna go into my catalog sheets and I'm gonna add those embossing folders to my catalog. So with embossing folders, here's my best piece of advice for you. Use crayons. This is a good excuse to buy a new set of crayons and do rubbings of the embossing folders rather than trying to create an actual embossing folder impression of each one of them. It'll take lots of time, lots more time. You'll have to worry about all this different sandwich sizes as they're going through your machines and all that stuff. And you can just do a rubbing and with, when you do the rubbing, you can get the positive and the negative if you want and you get to buy a new box of crayons and it makes it really simple and really fast. And you know, what am I always saying? If it's easy, we'll do it. Doing a rubbing is easy and if it's not easy, we won't. So, actually I should probably. So this is a catalog page of borders and backgrounds, or no, sorry, just backgrounds, not borders. <laughs> Just back to one of the things that happens with embossing folders is they don't really, well, some of them do, but a majority of them don't fit in the themes and sentiments calendar year section, right? They're just things like swirls and diamond plate and um, hearts and dots and really generic stuff. Some of these things are gonna go in two categories just like before. So down here, I've got uh, birthday hats, right? What number is that? I think it's right here. So I've got this birthday hat die. Okay, so here's my tips. This is the image off the packaging. Okay, I just cut it out off the packaging, ran it through my Xyron, and then stuck it onto the front. So it makes it really easy to know what this embossing folder looks like. One of the challenges with embossing folders is that they all sort of look the same, especially as you get older and you pull that out, it's hard to see the pattern. So having that pattern indicator on it makes it easier to actually see what that is. Now, if your packaging is thick cardboard, like this one, you don't want to cut it out and stick it on there because when you run it through your machine, if it's stuck on there, you're going to have a flat block where that cutout was. So in this situation where this is cardboard or chipboard from the packaging, I just hinged it on with a piece of tape. So I can use this embossing folder. I can just flip that back, feed it through the machine, flip the tape back, and now put it back into the container where it belongs. But I do have a nice visual on that as well. So there's your first little tip for creating those. Now, if you also are like me, and let me put these back in the right way, and didn't save the packaging on your embossing folders previously, then my suggestion to you is if you want a visual on those things to do something like this. When you're making your rubbing for your catalog, make an extra rubbing and just include it. You can either tape it on or you can do something as simple as, I'm looking, I know it's in here somewhere, putting that impression on the inside 
of the file. There we go. So this one is clocks and I did the same thing. I just made an extra impression when I did the rubbing and put it in there so I can really see what those things are. So the difference here is um, this one is taped on so I can feed it through. This one I just put on the inside, which means I risk losing it when I take it out of there. So those are a there's a couple options for you, um, you know, when you're doing these. Now, one of the things um, about this class or taking any of my classes, I guess, is that 348. Ooh, goes in the front here. There we go. I can't see over the top. You get to learn from my mistakes. So the things that I did that didn't work out or the things that I did the long process of. So these are sort of all my shortcut tips and tricks. So learn from my mistakes. Now, when you're making your um, impressions of borders and backgrounds, I just took a ruler and gritted out a piece of 12 by 12 paper. As you know, I like to use old ugly paper. I use the white side for creating my catalog sheets. So. I gritted it out first and then I was able to do the negative and the positive of each embossing folder and then I just added the number so I knew where to find it, right? Super simple, just like we did for stamps. Oop, I need to close my rings here. Now you can use eight and a half by 11 or you can use a 12 by 12. I'm obviously using 12 by 12. One of the nice things about using the 12 by 12 is you get more impressions on a page can see more things on a page, but also this is a standard three ring. So I've also incorporated in some of my smaller, like eight and a half by 11 pages. So when I did um, these Anna Griffin, pa these Anna Griffin, um, what are they called now? Embossing folders. Again, I gridded out my page and then these are in the Anna Griffin Christmas box. Okay. So your um, tag, your label is going to tell you where your supplies are. So Anna Griffin Christmas box. These are all things that go together. There's a whole kit in here. There's some embellishments, all the things that work together with this kit, the cards. So remember my sort of mantra is keep things together. You use together. So I've got all of these things that go with the, the embossing folders and the stamps. So everything is in this one box. Now, once I use all the little embellishments, I may move them over. I may leave them in the box, but that, that directs me. The information that I put on the catalog page directs me to what I'm looking for in my room. So it makes it really easy to find those things. Now, here's another tip for you. Oh, when you are creating, so this is a bigger um, rubbing. This, here's the finished one here, right? This is a full, the full rubbing of the full uh, embossing folder and it is a, f a four by six embossing folder and it has different designs on both sides. Well, I wanted to make sure and capture both those sides and it's only for Christmas. I'm not going to use that anywhere else. So here's my tips for doing that. The very first thing I do is I take my sheet of paper and I trace around the edge of the embossing folder. Why? Because the odds are, especially when you first start doing this, that you, that you are, so there's the embossing folder. That as you're rubbing, when you're trying to figure out like the, the amount of pressure to rub with, that you are gonna rub too hard and you're gonna buckle up your paper or shift your paper. So if you've taken the time to outline that first, when, you, when your paper shifts, you can realign your paper and finish the rubbing. So you can just put it back, you know, put it back to where it goes. The other thing that I noticed as I was doing this is that this little heart on this camera, some colors are better. I think the lighter colors are better because the darker lines come out darker, but you can see I use green on this side, red on this side, and the design and the embossing folder on the green side, the design is more prevalent than on the red side. So as you're working, you'll definitely come across colors that you like better than others or that you think work better than others. Um, to really bring out the designs in your embossing folders. So I have to stand on my tiptoes every time I look in here to put something away. There we go. All right. 
So that's another tip for you. If you're doing the full embossing folder, go ahead and trace the outside of it first. And then if your paper shifts, you're able to realign and keep going rather than start again or have kind of a mess. Um, another, I, another tip is to, um, trying to find it, I'm trying to find my example here. Flowers, 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 F, I need to get to F. If you have embossing folders in different sizes, you might want to put a notation of how big that is. Now in this one, I actually did the full 12 inch embossing folder here. It's like 12 by two. But if I was only going to do half of that embossing folder, I would want to make a note as I did on this one that this is 12 inches long. So I would know that it's actually a long full size embossing folder rather than a four by six or five by seven. Same thing if you have something like a five by seven, I mean a six by six embossing folder and you're only doing a small part of it. The vast majority of these are four by six. If that's the vast majority of your size, I wouldn't worry about labeling all the sizes, but I would label the unique sizes, right? With the borders, I know what size they are because they're on, on a page called borders and you can see Pull that out. I'm going to pull it out of the pocket because it'll be easier to see. And you can see that, um, that they are just the strip borders, negative and positive side, and then there's the numbers down the side. But for ones that you don't know, this is six by six, or maybe it's a you know different weird size, including that size in there is going to be really helpful as well. So I would definitely recommend that. Okay, so. Let me take a quick no look at my notes here and make sure I've given you all the information that you need to get started. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna start by gathering your supplies. You're gonna sort by size. If you need storage containers, you're gonna order those or purchase those. Fill your containers first, then number. Create grid sheets if you have a lot of backgrounds, uh, style embossing folders where you don't need to see the whole embossing folder. Um, and then you're going to work through each container. You're going to number them and then work through or adding each embossing folder to the correct section or sections of your, cat of your catalog. Now remember, some things are going to go in two sections. You might have um, something that is um, hearts and you want to put it in borders and background or backgrounds and you also want to put it in Valentine's Day. You might also have a category called hearts where you want to put that as well. Remember. Going back again to um, session number one, what's important is what you remember, what you think of. When you think of hearts, do you think Valentine's Day or do you think hearts as a theme or as a shape category in your um, catalog? So you may need to make multiples of those things. A lot of people like to do, if they have a designer, Anna Griffin, they might have an Anna Griffin section. So this is Anna Griffin Christmas. I might have that in the Anna Griffin section, but also in the Christmas section so that if I I'm doing something where I need to know the designer or I want to use a particular designer, it's easy to find that as well. Okay, and oh, here's another tip. Um, I, when I labeled my stamps, I did it, I used my label maker and it took a while to do that. And then when I labeled these, I thought, why am I creating those labels? I could just use a Sharpie. And one of the beauties of a Sharpie is, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you write the wrong number or you make a mistake or whatever, you can just take a little rubbing alcohol and wipe that Sharpie right off. But it lasts a long time on the embossing folder, right? Occasionally you, you are going to have to rewrite the number. If you wear, if you use it all the time, you might wear it off, but in general, it's going to stay for a lifetime and you can use rubbing alcohol to mess that you make. Okay. Um, I talked about lining. Uh, I talked about adding sizes. I think that's it. So you're going to work through each container, labeling, get them into your catalog. So this week's challenge then is to, of course, gather your, your embossing folders together, follow steps one through eight in this week's handout. Now, if you're, <coughs> if you've got tons of embossing folders, I want you to, ca to catalog one or two containers depending on the size of the container. If you're using something small like Fab Files, maybe you're going to do two containers. If you're using something big like the Dice Stamp and Supply Organizer, maybe it's just going to be one. But your goal this week, one or two containers. And then also I want you to set goals for what you haven't yet had ch time to finish when it comes to paper embellishment dies. Set that goal and work through um, those things 
on your list as well so that you keep moving forward. Even remember, even if you're just doing a tiny bit in each of those categories, it's just gonna keep you on track and moving forward. Um, next up, once you meet your goals for the week, enjoy your reward. And last but not least, of course, what you wanna do, enter this week's contest. So remember, every week on the Get Organized Challenge, uh, scrapbook page on the Creative Scrapbooker magazine. We've got a great prize pack for you, but you have to order every week. Your entries don't roll over. So pop on there and enter to win as soon as you've completed your challenge. We'd love to give you a prize before the challenge is over. All right, everybody, I think that's it. I think I've sort of wrapped up everything you need to know about getting your embossing folders organized. Thanks so much for joining me for the 12 week Get Organized Challenge here at Creative Scrapbooker magazine. I look forward to seeing you next week.